Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, so, you know, Jack is currently experiencing a little bit of web, sorry, experiencing a little bit of internet troubles and he'll be, lo he's, he's logging on as we speak. He's trying to, to restart his computer. Um, so while we're waiting for him, we'll start the meeting and introduce our guest of the day. We have Chloe and she has brought along three adorable friends uh, for us to draw and learn from. We have Penny, Nickel, and Dime, the Loose Change Gang, um, her, her, her mice, her pet mice. Um, so while we're waiting for Jack, uh, let's start by, by meeting Chloe and look, seeing inside of her nature journal a little bit um, about her friends. Uh, thank you for joining us. Would you like to Mr. share Jack? your nature journal for right now? Sure. Oh, to buy Mr. Jack a few more time. I'll hold Penny for you. Okay, so okay, so this one I this one was just one of Penny. So this one is of her in my sister's hair. She had um when she was like riding on her shoulder, she had tunneled into her hair. And then this is just her like peeking over the edge of their cage and um this one is her in the toilet paper roll that I put in there. And then this is her head and this is just her at the edge of her cage. Um, another one that I did. Where's your cut out ones? Those are right here. So this one took me a couple of days to do. Um, so there's these things called like cutouts. Um, so you lift it over. And this is what I'm talking about. The other two are underneath her. Um, and then another one down here. This one, she wasn't underneath. I don't know where she was. So there's dime, uh, nickel, and then Penny was underneath him, her. And then this one uh, was of uh nickel and she was in the wheel and then this is a little cartoon character that i made up to help me uh ask questions better and uh that's of nickel eating and uh that's of penny like up against a wall I want to echo what I'm hearing in the chat that that folk that um, a lot of us are really really loving um, how you did those cutouts and those little paper doors. Um, it's such a wonderful way of showing the information that's hidden beneath, and so showing the inside of the nest that way. So that way, folks like when when somebody was looking at your journal, they can understand that this is what you see on the outside of the nest. But then when you investigate deeper, that that's what you see. What a wonderfully creative thing to add to your nature journal. Um, you. And here, and here is Jack. It's, it's brilliant. You know, Chloe, this is so much fun. I'm sorry I wasn't able to be here earlier, but Zoom had its own plans for us today. So, but now I've Zoomed back in and there's, there's our buddy Penny. Hi, Penny. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so, um, I'm sure this has already been said, but again, just Chloe, we are so delighted to have you and your little friends with us today. And I thought what might be useful is for me to show some tr some tricks and ideas about drawing mice, and then we'll put it on the penny cam and show um, and everybody uh, will all draw a penny together um, from from your cam. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah, that sounds great. And, and so just you know, in the quick look that I had at your journal, there, you're doing some really, really interesting things. First of all, the way you're integrating your words and your observations, your, 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 your sketches and those things, really, really thoughtful and being intentional about that. I love that. You also are introducing our, our group to this whole idea of like this little kind of flip up idea. I really want to do that in my sketchbook journal now. I think that's really cool. And I like your also your idea of that little character that helps you ask questions. I've got I've got Morp, um, my little harbor seal icon, who helps me do the same things. And it's cool to see that you're using that strategy. 
I really, uh, I really like that. Yeah, that's where I got the idea from uh, Mork. <laughs> what, what does yours have a name? Uh, I think so, but I kind of forgot it. <laughs> okay. It's all right. If you if you remember, let us know. So should I show some tricks on some, some mice sketching strategies, and then then we'll get our mouse on. Okay. All right. Here we go. Um, let's see. We are going to share my screens, and I'm going to share my desktop. And here we go. Um. Oh. <laughs> yeah, want some food? Um, uh, all right. All right, now, here we are. So we're going to have a mouse party. And um, what I wanted to do is first take a look underneath the hood of, um, of, of, the, of, of the mouse and, and see what's happening on the skeleton underneath. And then we'll have just do a little bit about sketching some what happens when the fur is on the mouse and but let's start by looking at some mouse x rays. Isn't that cool. So here's an x ray of a little mouse and we notice some really interesting things with this and so let's take let's take a look here. Um, the first thing that I'm observing is that we have this this interesting skeletal structure. So there is there's a head, and for my head, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw kind of a a block shaped like this, um, and the kind of down in here is where our spine attaches to it, and the spine comes down it turns abruptly and heads up. And then it has a curve across the back and out to a tail. But look at this really interesting twist in the spine. Now get really close to your screen and um, you may be able to see that right in here, in this area here, that is where our little mouse rib cage is. And then it has a shoulder blade that is floating up in here. And then that goes to a from a shoulder to an elbow. And then it has a little wrist down on the floor and its little mouse foot is there. From its little mouse wrist. So if we put fuzz on top of this a couple of things one so i'm going to put some little some fuzz here some skin fur we're going to have kind of curve this in back this depending on how much our little mouse has been eating this part can be bigger or smaller um, but this this area here between the rib cage and the neck that can move around a lot and so this this little change of angle here in the spine ends up becoming kind of a prominent thing that we can see in the mice as they take different poses also notice here that the foot has a shoulder elbow wrist but that wrist is coming out right where the edge of the body is and so you might just see just a little mousy foot sticking out here. And lastly, we have a hip bone back in here. And from that, our little mouse has a knee. It goes back to a heel. And then from that heel, there's an instep that comes down and that instep attaches to toes. So think of this as like this is the hip, knee, foot. But this foot, we're going to think of it in two sections. There's the instep part. So that is on the jack foot. All right? That's this part of my foot. 
on the mouse on our mouse friend that's going to be a big column that comes down and then the little mouse toes are going to be what we sort of see as the mouse foot is going to be that but technically the whole foot is all the way back to here so we may see this as a little beam coming down and then there are toes that come off of that this whole area in here is little mouse muscles and can pop out as a little box kind of a little box in here with this strange little foot coming down again the foot coming down you're, you'll see the instep sometimes you even see a little bit of the the ankle right in here and then there are these little mousy toes that are going to stick out from that now on the front foot here's what you're going to see you're going to see there is a i'm going to draw a little ball here for my little mousy foot there is one toe that sticks off there are two in the middle that are longer there's another one on the side and you'll sometimes see on the inside side a little bit of its vestigial thumb but these four toes are the major ones that you're going to see and that little thumb on the inside you really rarely see on the outside on sorry on the back if this is sort of the the ball of my um, of my foot there is a little toe on the outside there are three long ones that are about the same length in the middle and then another one on the other side so four in the front there's five toes in the back three long ones and two short ones here in the front two short ones and two long ones now <clears throat> let's take a look at another skeleton view hey, i thought i had another moon party this huh no i thought i had another skeleton i don't we're good let's start thinking about sort of the the mice uh sort of how to then to construct these these little mice um i like to think of this whole head area here as a unit as a ball and in that sort of the nose is so there's a ball that has sort of a nose region that pops down in the middle of it so here you can kind of see this sort of nose zone coming down so there's a ball that has this little kind of noseness sticking out of it the eyes are going to be placed on either side of that so from the front I'm going to draw a line where my eyes are. I'm going to draw a line right through the center. And my mouse has a little nose box that pops down here. The eyes are going to fit on either side here. And the eyes often kind of stick out. They feel kind of beady. Um, depending on the angle, they will be a full circle or a half circle. Now on the nose here, it's going to come down narrow and then widen out here. There's a little bump in the front and we're seeing sort of these little sort of the whisker beds sticking out on either side. Your mouse head comes back from that um i like to think of the top of the head as sort of a an, an angular shape coming up like this the ears are going to be attaching onto the sides up here and then you've got little cheeks if it's got its head tucked into its body you're going to see that really pushes this sort of these cheek areas out here and you get this really kind of cute, cute, cute round face look. But if it's got its head lifted away, you'll see a more angular face in there. Let's take a close look at the ear. So the simple mouse ear, you're going to have something that comes up and swings back, but there is a flap 
on the side that is closest to you that is going to kind of come down on the side towards you. So if in the background, this is what the ear is doing, there's this little flap of, of tissue that is going to cover the front part. And I like to have my line kind of come up and not fully hit here. That helps you kind of begin to come around this corner. On the inside of that, there is a deeper space in here where it kind of goes back into the little mouse's head and the front edge of it is blocked by fur. So this top, this front edge, there's fur that comes around there. So this is something to kind of commonly expect on sort of a mouse ear sort of a thing. From this angle, take a look at the back feet. You see two on the sides, three in the middle. Those little hands in the front, aww, right? Nibble, nibble. Um, we're not seeing all four fingers because um, one is that there, there are some that are either hidden by the angle of the hand or hidden under its little uh, mouse nibble, nibbler. Now what I want to do is start to turn this mouse head to the side. So what I'm going to do is, is take this, I'm going to start with that little ball, and then draw the center line of my mouse head. Now, I have this little nose zone that is going to stick out in the front. So I want to think of that. It goes to little muzzle zone on this side, but on this side, I'm going to make that muzzle zone much smaller. So small over here, bigger whisker bed over here. And the thing that I find really helpful to do is to, as you're drawing in the eyes, this, the eye that's on the side that is the closest to you is the easy eye. And here it is more or less round. So he kind of comes to a little bit of a point down here. But the eye to really pay attention to is the eye on the far side, that far side eye. It gets foreshortened. It's partially blocked by this kind of ridge of the nose. And so that far side eye can take on a, an unexpected shape. If this is the nose, the angle of my eyes, my ears are going to be at the same angle. So where my ears start, and come up to those lines are going to be, I want to pay attention to where those are in relationship to um, in relationship to the angle of the ears. I don't want to have my eyes on, on one level and my ears kind of sticking up on another. So if the bottom of the ear is coming from here on this side, you know, so this one's really turned away from me. So I'm not get I don't get to see very far into that ear. On the other side, that's where I'm going to be starting down there. Tops of my ears can roughly come to the same height. So then my little mouse head is coming back. And think of from the bottom of the ear down here, you know, you're going to swing out wide to make a broad little mouse head. Now for drawing fuzz on this, here's what I recommend you don't do. I recommend you don't start doing this over the entire surface of the mouse. Instead, we want to suggest a little bit of fuzziness. And so I can do that with how I make my lines. I'm gonna make just sort of like in this line here, I'm gonna just put in just a couple of little flicks of my, my, my pencil here on the outside of the head here. I'm going to make a few little kind of just, if this is the edge of my mouse head, I'm gonna just put in a few little kind of flicks in like that. And that just suggests that, hey, this is fuzzy. This is fuzzy.
along the bottom here, I can, you know, this is the bottom of my little mouse head here. I'm going to just break that with a couple of little kind of fuzz lines just to suggest that this is, this is a fuzzy little rodent. The back of my head is here. A solid line feels like it's a ping pong ball, but if I just have a few little kind of breaks in that, that does a lot to suggest fuzzy mouse. On the eye, I'm going to leave a little bit of a highlight, make the rest really dark, and the eye feels wet. Wet eyes really make something feel alive. So if I've got wet eyes, then it's sort of sparkling back at you. The minute I darken the whole eye, it starts to feel a lot more dead, like it's not shiny. So I want to keep those in there. Last thing I want to point out is that there's a little bit of a pale area around this mouse's eye. And if I block that in, it, it's going to also really kind of help me, um, let me kind of get this sense of um, the pattern on this one's little head. So if I were drawing a beastie like this, the full pose, my kind of initial sketch might be something like this, that my mouse is sitting kind of looking at me. It has its head off to the side and it's looking over in this direction. Its little mouse feet are down here on the bottom. And then I would put in a little line saying, its eyes are about at this level, its ears are about at this level, and I can just put some little placeholder ovals for those ears. And then I'm getting in there and drawing those eyes. And once I get those eyes in there, it starts to feel really kind of cute and mousy. Let's look at a mouse from a different pose. <clears throat> How would I start to think about blocking in a little beastie like this? Well, what I'm going to do is this little mouse overall is kind of pointing towards me. Its little mousy head zone is more to the left. It's looking at me and so here is the line of its eyes, here's the line of its nose, here's the line of its ears. And then I'm going to start breaking those in here. Here, just in this little in this little photograph, notice even with a slight head turn, the difference of the shape of that far side eye. The difference of the shape of that far side eye. That's going to be really, really useful in making this mouse look back at you. Ears coming up in here, right? And what about handling these feet? Well, I'm gonna have a foot in here. I'm gonna have another little foot coming down in here. I'm seeing its back foot, its instep, and its little foot in here. On this, what I'd like to do is just come down here and take a little bit of a closer look at how I might handle these feet. See, the toes are doing this kind of cool thing. The toe comes up and down, and then it has a little nail on it. it. has a little pad here. And so the toes have this little loop to them. So that means as this one is pointing its foot towards me, I see a toe. I see the two middle ones, and I'm going to put those ones together. 
So I'm just drawing little rectangles where those toes are. And here you can actually see that little thumb there, very, very subtle. But then the foot comes back and up. And so what I'm getting here is these that I've got these vertical toes. What I did for these toes that are pointing towards me is I just drew some little rectangles, right? A few little overwrap, two in the middle, one off on the side. And what about this other foot that is down here? Well, I've got one toe that is off on the side. Let's see if we can get even closer to that. All right, one little toe off on the side. I then have two toes, and I'm seeing this other third toe in here. So I'm just putting those in as little boxes. If I want to make those more fancy, I can put a little nail on them. And what about in the back? On that back foot, I'm seeing one of the side toes. I'm then seeing big two of the three middle ones. Hold on, sneeze. Sorry, I couldn't get to my mute button in time. Um, but I find that just sort of drawing in those ones that are kind of pointing towards me just kind of helps me kind of get that shape initially on there. Then I'm seeing back to the little foot there. Then I've the side of this little beastie is coming in with all its fur. But I like thinking of these toes, the front surface that is pointing towards me, as just little little rectangles. It kind of helps me kind of get quick toes in there. So maybe this one is also just a good place to for us to put in that this far side eye is really ovular, while the close side eye, not as much. So are we going to have a tendency to want to draw the eyes the same? But if I can avoid that little bump of a nose, hello, I have a little nose. All right. Then we have our little mousy muzzle. Aw, super cute, right? So, um, just again, how do I kind of approach this? I'm going to think of the head as a unit. This is the one on the right. That body as a unit. Here, that little compression in here, it's got its head back so that this point is up really, really close here. So I start with just sort of a light little thing, a little light ball, and then it's going to have some mouse features sticking out of that. This one's middle of its head is pointing off this way. Its ears are off in a line like this, so its eyes are going to be off in a parallel line. If I've got that blocked in, this ear, this close ear, is operating in this whole area here, really big. We've got this other ear as sort of a side view. So I'm going to draw in the side of its little mouse head. And to make that look a little bit more furry, I'm just going to give it a few, little, few places, a few little kind of lines in. I'm not seeing the eye on the other side. I'm going to give it a little bump of the nose, little bump. Then I've got that cute little whisker pad. Now my head comes back in a great big cone. And here is my nibble holder. Far ear, not going to worry very much about it at all. This close ear 
it's kind of winging up towards me, allowing me to see there's a little bit of darkness down inside there. I don't want to get wrapped around the axle about putting too much detail in there. And then on the back side of my little mouse friend, look for these kind of cool angles. I'm going to just give those just a few little bristles like that to make it furry. Then we have this nice little foot that we can see. So there's that long instep that comes down, that long instep, and then toes, one on the outside. There's three long ones, and on these, I'm gonna kind of come up and down, and then hide some of the others behind it. And I can't see the other little toe on the other side, so expect there to be one that is separated, then a group of three. If I am adding tone on this, I want to think of where would where would I get little highlights? Well, the back leg is right in here. So I'm likely to see a little highlight up in that area on top of where the little mousy thigh comes in. On the back here, there's sun hitting it. That might pick up some light. And then also along the edge of the forehead. Here along this, sort of the edge of its sniffer, um, it drops down and so would be more likely to be in shadow. So that's, if I'm trying to show volume, just a few places where I might expect some of these little highlights to appear. So that is, that's a little bit of fun mouseness. And what we'd like to do now is to go live to the, um, penny cam and um, I thought it'd be fun to to set those 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 boxes up there and then um, yeah there we go and so penny is just going to be moving around penny's going to be doing penny things and what you want to do is get multiple little views of Penny. And at first, to kind of help you sort of see how I might be approaching this, Penny moves, I move. Penny moves, my moves. I'm going to have my drawing pad visible to you. That means Penny will be smaller on your screen. But you'll sort of see how I'm initially kind of blocking in these poses. And you'll see that when Penny comes back, like here Penny is giving us this great back view again. When Penny does that, I'm going to be working on my Penny back view. And then when Penny is giving me a front view, I'll be working on my Penny front view. Chloe, thank you so much for your Penny wrangling. Okay. But then I'm going to turn off my cam so the Penny cam is really big. Aww. Oh, there's something to nibble. There's something to nibble. Yeah, Penny. Um, and then I'll turn off my cam so Penny's really big. And then we're good to go. All right. So, all right. Oh, look at that angle of the tail. Look at that angle of the tail. So, Penny's to, when Penny is running, I got to be on the screen. Got to be on the screen. When Penny is running, uh, Penny's tail is up. What if that's just something that that, that 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 happens and there's sort of a long body um it's bigger towards the back and i'm seeing sort of a blurry zone in here where the feet are moving and then flat out under the head oh now penny's giving me a front view All right so i'm going to have a long head 
Oh, now back to this view. Okay, so in the back, Penny's head kind of sticks up. What is Penny's ear doing when she's running? Oh, it kind of had that ear kind of folded back. Oh, go, 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 go. And then I'm seeing another little blur zone, a little foot action blur zone in here. Oh, P Penny just sort of showed me a little back view where there was a bump and then kind of head sticking out like that. I'm going to start just sort of have a gesture of that little pose. Now Penny's showing us running to the left. Right. Oh, so in these views, we see this back foot kind of clearly. Oh, nom, nom, nom. I'm going to run with that. Oh, look at me go. Look at me go. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so um, back kind of has an angle like this, and then there's a big flat head, and then the feet are tucked right up there against the face. Ear is sticking up. Eye is somewhere in there. A little tummy, um, and posing foot out. Oh, Penny, you are gorgeous. Look at you, look at you, look at you. Um, and then the t your tail is coming off there. And nom 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 nom. Um, so you see, I've got several of these views going. Now what I'm going to do is just start to draw over these with my graphite pencil. But I'm going to take myself off the screen here, so we're just going to have this penny cam. So start with gesture sketches. Start with gesture sketches, and then. When po whenever P Penny, uh, you kind of get enough on your gesture sketch, then you can start to do this. Start. I'm going to make a little penny running to the left. How am I handling those those feet? I'm not. When Penny's running, I'm not worried about drawing her feet. What a cute little one. All right, now we're going to get some still Penny shots. Penny's got some snacks. So make, make an, some initial just sort of gesture sketches of Penny the Explorer. So even if the mouse is, you know, moving around, it's, yes, it is easier to draw from something that is just a still photograph. Oh, look at how cooperative you're being. Oh, yeah. What do you think of that? Mm 
Chloe, thank you for wrangling little Penny so nicely for us. That's okay. Well, I don't want her to escape. Gaping at a mommy's eye. No, let's do that. You want something to do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want it. No, I don't want it. No, I don't Penny is very lucky to be with somebody who loves her so much. Thank you. She takes very good care of them. What What is your experience like of being being responsible for for Penny's welfare and safekeeping? What is that What is that like? Well, um, some might say it's kind of hard work, but like cleaning the cage. But I don't super mind it. And also, I love to, like, see them and hold them. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, you recycle. You wanted to oh, recycle. Yeah. This is a good way to, like, recycle stuff. Well, your habitat. You re used recycled stuff. You didn't uh -huh. buy anything. Oh, I did buy a couple of things. But, yeah. Um. How has it being uh, responsible for 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 Penny changed your way of thinking about your relationship with other animals and other living things? Uh, um, if it has. What made you want to get mice? You had that kind of. Uh, well, I had another mouse. Well, we tried to rescue. Well, okay, so. There was this baby mouse that we found and our cat had killed its mother. So we tried to take care of it. Inside our house, yes. Inside our house and um, and uh, that really started me like before, like I wasn't afraid of mice or anything, but I, was, I just didn't really care about them. But after I had, uh, it's named Peanut. After I had Peanut, I was like, Oh, having a mouse is so nice and cute. You wanted to learn how to take care of them uh -huh. more. Yeah. Um, it died a week after we uh found it, but hmm. I got Tina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I don't know what else to take. That's okay. How long have you had your mice? Um, I've had them for about like two months now. I think three months actually. Yeah, so they're like five months old now. Um, I got them when they were two months old. Um, Is that a good age to be getting mice? Uh, that's what I think from like the uh the guy that was getting the mice for me uh well like i bought them no. the pet shop uh said that like oh these are fresh ones and uh, so they'll last a lot longer and also they actually live a lot longer than we thought we thought that they only lived to be like, like a one. year a year old is what we but read. the pet shop actually said that these would last like two years so i'm really glad mm. about that yeah they don't have a long life experience so. there been any surprises in being a uh a, a mouse wrangler um i just actually 
from what I like read and heard about mice, like they only like they just hid all day long, blah blah, and uh during the day, and that they were super noisy at night. But actually, especially her, um, she comes out a good often. Um, oh look at her. Um, during the day. Uh, the other two do a little bit, not quite as much, and they aren't really any noisy. Like, you'll hear, like, every night I'll hear, like, and that's all. Mm hmm Sweet. It's probably a good idea to keep that exercise wheel oiled so it doesn't squeak at night. Yeah. What happened when you first, you had a funny oh, story? Oh, yeah. So... When we first got the mice, like we just got them, and I was opening up the box to take uh, them out and hold them and put them in their cage. Uh, Nickel, this is why part of the reason why I think he's so timid is he he climbed out of the box and ran behind our couch, and oh. we and we had to like move the couch and. Uh, mom almost had him, but then it went through her legs, and then it finally caught him. And then Dime almost escaped, too. He had, like, thumb paw out and freed him, but then I caught him again. So that's loose change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's the only one who has not escaped or anything. Where does Penny like to hang out on you? Uh, she likes to climb up onto my shoulder and then onto my face. She doesn't really get onto my face, though. And she rides on my shoulder a lot. She likes riding on your shoulder, huh? And then if you have a pet mouse, what do you need to do when you're done holding them, though? Uh, you have to wash your hands. Yeah. Because yeah. they could carry diseases. Well, That's... these ones are probably okay, but they yeah. poop and pee a lot. Back. Another thing that I've noticed about these that I didn't know about mice before, I've learned a lot of things, but one of the interesting things is they have a lot of control with their tail. Like, I, I had no idea what their tail was for, but actually, like, okay, if I hold it, it might, yeah, see, it wraps around my finger. Oh, um, wow, yeah. And uh, when I'm like, setting them back down sometimes their tail will just whip around trying to look for something to hold I'm guessing and I always think that's very interesting I had no idea I just thought it was just like a noodle that they carry around mm -hmm. you aren't hungry anymore are you just in the dress so I can go upstairs and all around with her on my shoulder I really trust her. I don't worry about her escaping or anything. Sometimes I even let her roam around on the floor a little bit. Like I, she something. doesn't like the ball, huh? No, I think it's too big for her. You think so? Because she can hardly move it. Dying though, that that Mister can move it. Yeah. Maybe she can bring it. Wow. Oh, this is a great little, great little penny view. So get that angle on the back. See that angle on the back? No day. Take a sunflower seed. She's been very patient. She's probably going to take a good nap. I think Penny's getting a little bit tired there. Wow, well, she's just getting, I think, a bit bored. Oh. What, what do you often do to kind of keep her entertained? Well, I hold her and carry her and then set her on the floor. 
What do you do in her habitat, though? Uh, well, I have the wheel, and then you can see I have sticks for them to climb on. There's a lot of stuff for them to climb on, and they have each other to play with. I used to have these balls to put in there, but I didn't think they were really using it, it so. Do you keep I the habitat the same, though? No, I change it every time, every week, every time that I, uh, that so, I so they get a new sort of, then you get a new playground adventure site. Uh huh. She loves it. What, what, what happens when you change it up? What do you notice? Um, they, when I, okay. So my cage has two floors. The bottom floor, I put them in when I'm cleaning out the cage. And then, um, I'll put them on the top again. Uh, so they, they, when I first put them in, they just full on go exploring. That's the first thing that they do. Um, yeah, I think they really like it. There's a, a one thing that I always put in there that I never change, and that is their wheel. I always put the wheel in there. Oh, and their sticks. But the, like the hidey holes and the, well, the hidey holes uh, all change. So there's, there's, so there's different places for them to hide, different places for them to run around and explore. Each week they get a new. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really fun. And if I notice that they like actually like made a nest, they have done that a couple of times, like mm -hmm. took out materials and stuffed it in stuff. Uh, then I'll usually keep that thing in there because it's their nest. What kind of materials have you provided? Uh, I've put in dryer linen, uh, oh. stuff, and well, the toilet paper roll, they kind of just tore up. <laughs> oh, and also there's paper in there that they've tore up. They like your hair from your hairbrush. Too. Oh, yeah. I haven't put that in a lot. Your though. brother does. Oh. <laughs> well, it might be fun to see what people have sketched through the penny cam. Um, um, why don't I... Uh, um, I think I might put her back so that she can, like, take a so nap. Uh, okay, that's a good idea. And, and then maybe let's um, let's bring on some people from the group who can share some of their mouse in motion sketches. Um, again, I'm just noticing how careful you are holding little Penny. You're being really gentle and responsible. That's really sweet. I also like how you are, um, you know, you you you're noticing that she might want some rest because she's been very very active you're you're really kind of thinking about the mouse's needs not just your own so these are my sketches of our, our little time with penny and i've also got a little sketch of your finger with the tail wrapping around it and some notes about that and how you talked about how it has lots of control of things with its tail and I drew a little picture of a uh, penny um, up on your shoulder. Um, I liked how she likes to kind of perch up there with you. So when she was running, I, the feet were just a blur to me, but I can kind of see where the front edge of the blur was and the back edge of the blur was. So I just did these things with kind of not any one specific foot, but the, these kind of runny blurry feet. And uh, some of them, you know, when she was uh, able to hold a pose a little bit longer, I did things like this. And also I thought it was fun when she was kind of exploring the other way, so off the other side of the box. So I, I, I kind of bounced around from one sketch to another, to another, to another. But in doing that, um, this is one of the last ones I did, and I think it kind of captures her the best of the ones that I've done so far, but but I kind of had to go through these other ones. The ones I'd like the, that I think kind of capture her the best for me 
are this pose and this one when she was kind of looking over the side of your little box. Um, so um, if you have um, some sketches from the penny cam that you would like to share, um, okay. what I'd like to do is invite people to either use the raise hand function or you can also raise your hand and I will. Hey, Jack, yes. um, do you mind if I make a, there, there was somebody, I, I apologize for not remembering who, but somebody had made a suggestion to me um, recently. Um, at the end of each session, if people would like to, what if we go to gallery view and everybody can hold up their pages before people start sharing individually? Then oh, that that's a good idea. Let, let, let's do that now. So let, let's, I'm going to pop over to gallery view. So if you have been, guys and Penny, get your, your, your sketch and, and hold that up and we can kind of look around and see what has been happening with other people's mouse moments. Oh, mouse time. Oh, what fun. Oh, we, Chloe, are you seeing this? You're seeing everybody's uh -huh. portraits of your little Penny? I'm so proud of her. Yeah. Uh -huh. She did a great job for us today. Oh, that's really fun. That's really fun. So um, if you'd like to, to, to share some of your moments with Penny, um, just uh, you can just raise your hand on your screen, um, or we can also use the raise hand function. Um, I see that Ray Bonto has got something to share. Um, hey, it's great to have you with us. Oh, I have to allow you to unmute. Sorry about that. Now you can unmute. Um, hello. Hello. Um, I'm currently in India right now. So it's quite late. So I'm probably going to leave after I've done sharing. I'm, um, I'm glad we, we got you on first. Let's, um, I'm going to make my video smaller. And this one, um, spotlight. And then now you're, uh, you're full screen with us. Yeah, that was the slide show. Oh, fun. I see the little skeleton up there. Oh, that's, <clears throat> and that, 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 uh, that front, that, uh, it's cool to see the way you, uh, on the skeleton view, sort of showed the, the, the bones. And are you jumping in directly with your, your paintbrush to, um, to sketch those, or are you starting with pencil? Start with pencil, with the, not with this one. Yeah. Um, the, the, uh, the, the, the little front view of the rodent uh, on the top left side uh, really feels like it's looking back at me. Um, it's nice to sort of see the, when, um, when the head is turned just a little bit, you know, variations in the ear, variations in the eye, and that also helps really turn the head. What was it like to you to do the penny and uh, Penny. Oh, there we go. So, so folks, notice um, so you're, you're just you're uh, on that one on, on yeah on this page. We're just we're bouncing around from one to another, getting kind of quick things. You really were focusing on the shape around the head. That's really cool. That's a that's a good strategy. And sometimes instead of trying to do everything get yourself to focus on on one thing like say the negative shape around the head and sometimes that's all that my brain can hold at any one moment that's really fun yeah, oh uh, well that's really that's really really useful for us to see thank you so much for sharing that what time is it over there uh, it's 1, 1 a.m. Yes. Oh my gosh, you really stayed up for 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 Penny. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Bye.
Bye bye. I hope you can um, I hope you can sleep in uh, tomorrow morning. <laughs> Take care. Great to see you. Um, bye. Bye. Um, oh, Chloe, did did you have any um, thoughts or comments for Ray Bonto? Do you want uh, to? Share? No. No. Thanks for coming, and I thought that he did a very good job. I did too. I did too. Um, now let's bring in Ann Chadwick um, from Point Blue Conservation Scientist Science. Uh, she's a, a biologist and journaler. Oh, look at all these penny mouse moments! <laughs> I love penny mouse. And Chloe, thank you so much for sharing. That was just amazing. <laughs> And I wrote down a few of the things that you put in the cages and I love how you mix things up so that they don't get too bored and you can kind of see then their behaviors with different things, whether it's the wheels or your hair or different hidey holes. Um, so very cool. And also I love your, your observations about what their tails might be for. I mean, that was one of my first thoughts was like, why do they have such long tails and they look like they're actually pretty muscular and agile, you know, like there must be a function there. So I love that you were asking that, but I wanted to ask you, Chloe, like what questions are you putting in your journal? I'm just wondering where your curiosity goes with them. Um, a couple of my questions were, man, Uh, why they slept uh, in a certain place when it was super cold. Um, and also why Nickel was scared, is so scared, but Penny isn't. Hmm. So it's almost like they have different personalities or mouse-analities. That's cool. <laughs> And oh, you think maybe that's based on their experiences of how they they first came into your house or how you know what they were exposed to early on? Maybe I don't know. Um, yeah. And I found the name of my cartoon kit, uh, mouse thing. Yeah. Uh, its name was Alex. Alex. <laughs> Alex. All right. Hi, Alex. And I, I, one of my favorite views um, is the backsides and also when um, Penny was sort of stretching up to try to reach, I think it was a water bottle that you were offering her. So I thought those were fun. Um, and I just love like learning from Jack, how you can kind of go from one view to the other and not stress out about, oh no, she moved, but she'll come back. You know, you can see that again later. So very fun. Thank you so much for sharing and opening up your home to us. That's great. Thank you for joining us. Um, and thanks so much for sharing that. Uh, yeah, that little view of your sort of stretchy up back view of the mouse. Um, <laughs> these, these little kind of mouse moments. Um, they're just with us for that, that, that little moment. But sometimes there's enough that is you can kind of catch in your brain to get some marks on paper. This is really different. It just feels totally different than drawing from a photograph. Yeah. Also, it explains why so many people draw sleeping cats. <laughs> right. Ever draw a sleeping penny or sleeping nickel? Uh, no. Because usually yeah. dimes covering up to them. Or... Uh, ah, yeah. yeah. When they sleep, are they usually kind of burrowed in somewhere where they're hard to see? Yep. I nice. couldn't do it time because I was slow on shavings but I would usually put this much of shavings and they would always burrow under it sometimes I thought that one of them had escaped because I couldn't find one yeah good but, but they're underneath the shavings uh-huh mm. that's, cool. that's cool well again and thank you so much for sharing with us um let me bounce over to the gallery view and I'm going to see if there's anybody else who's got something to share. If so, give me a wave and, and let me know. Um, let's join Noelle. 
Um, hi there, and thank you so much. I'm just going to add you into the spotlight here, and you now can unmute. Did you enjoy the adventures with Penny? Yes. <laughs> what, what, what were your thoughts about it? Any uh, thoughts you wanted um, to, to, to share together? I have two things. I have one of these drawings is not as good as the other one, and I couldn't get, I could get the legs on one of them, and then on the other one, I did mostly the body. Oh, but that body shape is just, you really got that body shape so accurately preserved and the proportions of the eyes and the ears and how those ears kind of flop back like that. That's and I really also cool. have this one <gasps> that oh, I you, you put in the colors and how the color blends down towards the bottom and towards that kind of creamy tummy and more vibrant color along Penny's back. Oh, that's really cool. Um, Chloe, do you have um, any thoughts or comments that you wanted to to to, to share or, or add to that? Um, I thought that the color on the second page was very accurate. She it's a uh, kind of hard to get her color right. Um, and I thought that you did a very good job. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much for sharing that. That's really fun. And also, was the lower mouse, um, when you had the two on one page, was the lower mouse the second one that you did? Um, I think so, yes. It, it yes. really has, it, it's got the, it's just got, it got that, that flow, that kind of, I can feel the kind of the angles of the back of that. Was that when it was running? Yes. You, you really captured that feeling of that motion. That's exciting. Thank you so much. And thank you for being with us. Um, let's join Sydney. Hey there, Sydney. Thank you for being with us. Did you enjoy um, Adventures with Penny? I think you can unmute now. Yeah, Penny is so cute. I found myself very overwhelmed because she seemed very uh, active and interested in everything and wanting to like just jump off of her little pedestal and look around. Um, but I was able to. I was able to capture what seemed like her three favorite positions, which is her running and her nibbling. And my favorite, similar to Anne, I loved when we could just see her little round butt and her little legs. Particularly, I was interested in how you can only kind of see her feet just on either side of her little tail. So that was definitely my favorite one. Um, and it's so interesting, as Jack was saying, how different it is drawing from a picture, look how much detail I was able to put, versus drawing from real life, where all I could do was try and capture the essence of Penny as she was exploring and being excited. Yeah, yeah. And, and but, but these, you know, that, that tail up posture in the run is so interesting. It makes me wonder if when they are running, say, just across a floor, is the tail up or was that a posture that is specific to when you're running in an exercise wheel? Um, that was, that's, you, you really got, have the, the shapes of these. And that little back, back view of, the little back view of the, the mouse, I love that with those feet sticking out. That feels so penny. Mm -hmm. uh, Chloe, do you have any um, thoughts or ideas that you wanted to, to, to share with Sydney? Uh, I thought that the eating posture was very good and the uh, back uh, back posture yep. was very good. Oh, thank you. And thanks for bringing all your mice and showing us. I love your setup and you were you made it so easy to watch her um, and you were doing a great job of wrangling her and keeping her interested in the little area. So good job on that. No problem. Sydney, thank you so much for, for sharing that. You know, just you. You know, that, that little, that little, sometimes those little kind of nugget drawings, you know, just like, you know, here's, the, here's the quick little back view. Sometimes we, we draw them just a little bit smaller, but you look at it and it feels, it feels mousy. Right? It's very satisfying when that happens, when you just yeah. get a quick, just, oh, it feels like a mouse. Great. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes then when I try to then do more on top of that drawing that kind of captured the mouse essence, 
I kind of lose it. Yeah, lose it. And so <laughs> yeah, sometimes just kind of getting those 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 quick moments and when I get them, then I'll just I'll make another drawing and I can get mm -hmm. more fussy with that. But then you've got those ones that sometimes but you see, those those sorts of sketches just come they come after sketching for a while, after looking for a while, then those things just kind of happen. That's really fun. Sydney, it's great to see you. Good to see you too. Hi. Um, let me bounce over to the gallery again, and I'll see if there's anyone else that wanted to share. Um, oh, let's join hopes. Um, so, oh, now, um, now here's where parrot meets mouse. Um, <laughs> uh, hopes you may now unmute. Okay, thank you. So I actually have a question for Chloe. You said you have a cat. Is uh -huh. the cat what does the cat think of the mice? Does it show interest in the mice? Well, she's a hunter, a very good hunter. Um, I don't think she's she really knows um, that they're there, um, but our, we also have a dog. She is very interested in the mice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like two times now when she saw the mouse and I put her back, like I showed it to her and then I put it back. She she just sat and just watched the cage and stayed there all night just wow. watching it. Wow. Um, what, yeah. what do you think of uh, the, our, our little parrot friend here? So cool. This is Samantha. Say hi, Chloe. So we have a cat also, but it's interesting that the cat's terrified of the parrot because Samantha will chase her and bite her tail. <laughs> I really enjoyed this and I'm so impressed with what a great mouse mommy you are because I think no matter what your pet is, no matter how tiny or what kind of pet it is to really care as much as you do and take such wonderful care. I'm just so proud of you and impressed by what a great mom you are. Thank you. And I really enjoy doing these pictures. It's so fun. Oh, you, Thank you, you really have got sort of the, those turns of the head and just the feeling and the, 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 the spacing of kind of nose to eye to ear, you've observed so well. Yeah, this was so much fun. Thank you, Jack and Chloe. We're, I'm sorry that, that uh, I got, uh, I, I was late to our, 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 our meeting and we, start, we started a little bit late, but, um, but it looks like uh, Avea and Chloe really uh, got us off to a great start. Oh, Samantha, be gentle. Um, <laughs> The uh, uh, Chloe, do you have any uh, comments or, or or thoughts for hopes? Um, I I kind of do. Um, so if you're going to do like just a head drawing, I I tried this once. Um, I just put black around it, and I think it like frames it very good. Like makes it, I don't know, like pop. Oh yeah, and look at that 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 light. So the light mouse really stands out against that dark background. That's fun. So you could try that if you wanted to make it more noticeable. Just something that I've noticed. But very good mouse drawings. Uh, that's fun. Thank you for that suggestion, Chloe. Uh, I hope thanks for for uh, sharing those the sketches with us. This was wonderful, Chloe. Thank you so much. And I just wondering what's the difference between rats and mice, do you know, because we had rat pets. Their tails are, are stubbier and, and fatter, but Actually, I asked that same question and the only differences that I can find is a uh, rats are bigger. And uh, that's actually all. Yeah, but their tails are really muscular. Do the mice have hair on their tails? Um, no, not really. No. 
So, but but Hoax, you had pet uh, rats? Years ago. Oh, fun. Yeah. So, yeah. Again, thank you so much. That was really fun. And uh, Hoax, thank you so much for sharing those. Those, uh, those, those, those sketches really also just bring back kind of the oh, gentle there, Samantha. She wants uh, attention. <laughs> <laughs> um, really, kind of the the the, the motion of those uh, of those little mice as they ran around. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. So good to see you, Jack and Avea, and everybody. Yeah, it's been a it's, while. Thank it's you. Been a while. It's great to see you back. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. That was really fun. Love the parrot. Yeah, wasn't that crazy? I mean, uh, parrot. Samantha likes to sit on 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 Hope's shoulder, just like uh, Penny on yours. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm going to bounce over to the uh, gallery view again. If there's anybody that wanted to share another thing, oh, um, sound great. Let's you may join us and welcome. Hi. So it's my first time here. Um, welcome. I just had this for joy. Uh, I'm not, really not used to draw like really move, fast moving animals. Um, I want the sleeping cat draw. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I also painted Penny's butt like everyone else. And I noticed this like part of her, her spine is kind of coming off. Um, I can notice her spine like going down one wheel her at the back. Um, I also draw her running around, but like I cannot really capture where exactly her eye is because she's moving around so much. And I was so used to drawing according to a picture so I can calmly compare the distances. And this was done by pencil. Um, I had charcoal pencil on top of it. It, it uh, there's a lot of folks making comments, and I absolutely agree with them that the line work you have with very few simple lines, you're capturing so much of the motion and the shape and the posture of these. What you leave out is uh, as wonderful as what you are leaving in. These really capture the the the, the motion and the energy of of our little friend Penny. Thank you. And it's like, it's such a so informative experience with Penny. I had a chinchilla while I was little. Um, I didn't even think of those many ways to keep them entertained and like so many ways to recycle toys to make them happy. And now I kind of feel sorry for my chinchilla. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I, I mean this earlier. So I have like more ways to have fun with them. Well, oh, yeah, I, it reminds me of my chinchillas. Oh, I, I suspect your chinchilla was loved. Um, but uh, Chloe, do you have any thoughts, comments, or ideas that you wanted to share? It's just very, very, very good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that isn't that, like, like our, our back views of, of, of Penny just really kind of uh, capture that one in that three quarter view where the, uh, where the also that one was turned towards you um, just really uh, simplifies the shape, but but and captures the aliveness of it so clearly that's so much fun. Yes, yes. And welcome to our group. We're really delighted that you um, you joined us today. Um, yeah, thank you so much. I saw your book at the library. I was like, I accidentally found this group. This is so interesting. Yeah. So yeah, we're we're here every week, um, sort of playing with a different a different idea. Um, but this is the first time we got to meet Penny. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chloe. Um, thank you for coming. Come again. That was really fun to see. Um, now I'm going to bounce over to the gallery again. If anybody else would like to share, please let me know. And um, not seeing that, I'd love to bring the mad botanist back on with us. Um, and um, 
we are um, uh, what are what are your thoughts today, uh, Ivea? I want to agree with everybody who say who's has been saying that Chloe, you're an amazing presenter. Um, just the way that you are able to answer questions and and take care of Penny and and also like be attuned to what we're we're curious about and. And and the way that you talk about your process of care and all of just we we just have really really loved having you and and have learned we got to learn some really cool things. It's fun to be able to practice from life, especially because I know that that's an area that challenges a lot of nature journalers. We we get out, we see some some critter move, and we're like, oh gosh, where do we start? And so getting to practice with with Penny was so much fun. Um, and so just thank you so much for being here and for giving us this opportunity uh, to meet her and to meet the others, the Loose Change Gang. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you, Avea. Um, I, I want to, we're, we're so grateful to you coming on today with us, sharing your wisdom and your kindness with these small little animals. Um, we really respect the way that you're so thoughtful about the, the caretaking you do of these animals. And it gives us ideas about, you know, our kind of our collective responsibility to other living things. You're really inspiring. And um, thank you so much for that. It's also really fun to peek into your journals and see your very creative process. Everything, you know, those little pop-ups um, Alex, the mouse, um, with, uh, and, and it's, it's wonderful to see that process and we're, we're just delighted to have spent time with you. Thank you. Um, Avea, thank you so much for, uh, helping us and managing the group. Um, you know, when, whenever there's a, 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 a problem, you're there to solve it and you really just help our community uh come together and and work together really grateful for what you're doing here to help support me with these and also the things that you do in pencil mile and chill and all sorts of other parts of our nature journaling community thank you so much thank you i'm really really honored to be here and to help out we're going to wrap for the day thank you all for being here um again thanks to special guests chloe and sweet little penny um, so grateful to you. Hope you have a wonderful day and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. And I will. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. -bye.